Hey everyone, so welcome to the first video in the Happy Tutorial series. So the first thing we're going to be doing here is just setting up our server and creating a route that just says hello world to the user. And so to do this, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a new terminal. So I'm going to go up here to terminal, press new terminal, and the first thing we want to do is we want to initialize this as an npm project. So we're going to do npm init. And then we're basically just going to fill the defaults. The only thing we're going to change though is for the entry point, instead of index.js, we're going to be using server.js which is gonna be our server happy server object that, it's gonna, that we're gonna instantiate here and create all our routes from and et cetera. And so then for the rest, just keep it as default, just keep pressing enter and we're good to go. So I'm gonna clear this here. You can see we have our package.json file that has been created. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we are just gonna create our server.js file. So we're gonna do server.js. And so we're using the newest version of happy. And to use this version, what you would usually do is you would do npm install happy, but the newest version is at happy dash happy, like this. So then after you've installed that, when it's done loading, you will see it appear here in package.json. Excellent, so you can see it's loaded and we are using 20.0.3. It's not it is loaded, what we're gonna do is, actually first we're gonna be using strict mode throughout this tutorial so we don't actually accidentally create any global variables and it's just a, a good practice to get into. And the next thing we're going to do is we need to actually import our um, the happy module and so we're just going to call it happy and we're going to do equals require and then it should show up at happy dash happy. So now what we want to do is we actually want to create our server object and a common practice to do when using happy is to wrap this in a function or an asynchronous function so that you can use the await keyword throughout. So for example, we're going to call this init and then we're just going to call a equal to an async function. We're going to use the arrow syntax and what we would do is we were just going to create a variable called const server. And we're going to set that equal to happy.server. And so what this takes is I'm going to use the server here. What this takes is a object. And so the most important keys in this object are host, which is just our local host, because we're using our computer, and then the port number that it's going to be running on, which we're going to do one, two, three, four. The next thing we would need to do is we would actually have to give a destination or a route that the server will reload. And so the way to do this is server.route, and it takes an object. And what you can pass is the first is the method. So the method will be get, um, get or put. And what we're doing is a get request because we are just getting the URL and sending it from the server to the user. Next is going to be path, and the path is just here root. So basically the very fr the home page of the website basically. And then the next thing you need is handler, and this is important because this is this houses your request object and the response toolkit, and it's basically how you handle these requests to these page. So you're going to be handling this get request within here. We'll get more into that into the when we start talking about roots, but for now, just follow along. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return some HTML. So I'm going to do h1, just say hello world, and then close it out. So this is what's going to be returned to the user when they go to this path. So close this. And so now we've got our main root set up and we've got our server set up. Now we just need to start a server. And so because we're using an asynchronous function within here, we can use the await keyword. And to actually start your server, you just use server.start, just like this. And a good thing to do is also to get more information. So you wouldn't actually have anything logged saying the server is started. So what we can do is we can log saying server started on, and then we can do the syntax here and you would do it by server.info.uri. And so what this is, this will basically say this information up here. So the URI will be uh, localhost and then the port number with a colon 1234. And so now what we need to do is we just need to call this function. So we're gonna call it by using init. And of course, because it's an asynchronous function, what this will do is this will return a promise. And so we want to be able to, we need something to handle in case um, the promise is rejected and stuff like that. So we could do, you know, dot catch, but a, a common thing you do is you just use the process object and you add an uh, event listener to it and it's unhandled rejection right here, which is good for promises that haven't been handled. And then of course you apply the callback function, which will just be an error. We'll use an arrow function and we'll log um, this error just like this and then we will do process.exit. So we will exit with an exit code of one out of the current process. 
And so the process object is basically just a global object that provides information about the current node process that's running. And so just save this. And then to be, let me clear the screen real quick. And what we're gonna be using throughout this tutorial is Nodemon, which is basically a great way to have changes added as your application is running on the server. So the way to install it would be just app install Nodemon. And I recommend doing it globally. So you'd add G like this. But if you already have Nodemon installed, then you can just start the process by just server, nodemon server.js. And you can see server is started on HTTP dash localhost 1234, which is from this right here. And so now if we just go to a browser like this, and we just do localhost 1234, you can see hello world is printed out right here. And this is coming from here. So the path that we are going to is just the root directory right here. And so we are returning hello world. All right. And in the next video, I'm going to be going more in depth onto routes. So this part right here, I'll see you in the next video.